Hey guys, it's John. This is a Pokemon tier list video that I recorded over a year ago and I never edited until just now, randomly. Just felt like doing it. Originally, when I recorded this video, my plan was to rank all 850 Pokemon in one video. And then when I discovered that it was taking a lot longer than I thought, I stopped after the original 151 and never did the rest of them. So that's why it hasn't gone up until now. Great, great story. Uh, yeah, it's just a casual, fun, silly video. Thanks, hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and start off with Bulbasaur. Now, first of all, let's just get this out of the way, okay? If there's any doubt in your mind where Bulbasaur should be placed on this list, I'm gonna have to ask you to click off this video right now because Bulbasaur is clearly S tier. It's not even up for debate. That's objective. That's actually, I, I know I said that these were all going to be opinions, but uh, Bulbasaur S tier, as close as we can get to fact, I think. Bulbasaur, a uh, really simple little green dinosaur, got cool green spots, got nice red eyes, uh, bulb on his back. Bulbasaur, exactly what it says on the tin. Exactly as advertised. Love it. Ivysaur, on the other hand, not exactly what it says on the tin. I don't see any ivy anywhere on this one. I do like that it's basically a Bulbasaur, but he's kind of hangry, maybe a little dehydrated, hasn't uh, called his mother in a while. Uh, the bulb on the back has blossomed a bit into what appears to be a flower, but other than that, looks uh, kind of unchanged <laughs> from Bulbasaur, so I can't quite put it into S tier, I'm gonna put it into A tier. And you know what? If you're mad about that, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. A tier is really good. Okay, A tier is like You're you're way up there. You're you're legendary. You're an unforgettable Pokemon compared to what we're gonna get into later uh, Bulbasaur not Bulbasaur Venusaur is the ultimate evolution of Bulbasaur and uh, he, He's gotten real hefty menacing and uh, angry and the bulb on the back has blossomed into whatever the hell that is. Uh, I'll be honest, Venusaur, probably the most underwhelming for me of the ultimate evolutions for the starters. But nevertheless, I, I'm going to go ahead and put Venusaur in A tier. Simply from the fact that he's a Gen 1 starter. Now, before we get too far into this, I'm not a Gen 1-er. I'm a Gen 2-er, okay? Get it right. Uh, Charmander, again, if there's any doubt where Charmander's going. He's going in S tier. Orange Lizard with the flame on his tail. Look at that, look at that bright, happy smile. He's looking excited, positive about his day. What's not to love about Charmander? Well, uh, Charmeleon. It's Charmander going through a bit of an angsty phase. He's got his claws out now, and he's got a grimace. Got a little Parasaurolophus bone out the back of his head. Did you like that dinosaur reference? Dinosaur lovers out there. I'm gonna give it an A tier though. I do like Charmeleon, the uh, the angsty phase of the of the evolution line. Nothing quite compares though to Charizard, the legendary fire winged lizard. Because apparently he's not a dragon. Not a dragon. There's some trivia for you. Charizard. I'm gonna sound like a typical Poke Bro here, but uh, he goes in the S tier. I think uh, it, it, you'd be hard pressed to find a Pokemon cooler than Charizard, uh, despite the fact that he's a fire type. <laughs> uh, Squirtle, well, once again, S tier here. I mean, do I really need to explain? Blue Turtle got a little swirly at the end of his shell. This is back when Pokemon designs were just so beautifully simple. I mean, it's it's a blue turtle, and and he's a blue turtle because he's water type. There's really little else to, to make him look magical other than a little swirl on his tail. But despite the plain appearance, Squirtle is uh, a classic Pokemon and S tier for sure. War Turtle, how the mighty have fallen. I'm gonna put War Turtle in the B tier. I don't know if it's the Captain America winged ears or just the fact that it looks worse than Squirtle. I mean, if you take away the ears, it, it's literally Squirtle with a swishier tail. Uh, I just don't really like Wartorl that much. Just not, just not my favorite. Now, Blastoise. Blastoise. 
is such a step up from War Turtle. It's uncanny. We're gonna put him in S tier. Now, I mean, look at Ivysaur to Venusaur, then Charmeleon to Charizard, then War Turtle to Blastoise. Those transitions there, that's why the latter two, Charizard and Blastoise, are S tier, and Venusaur is A tier to me. It's not that it's a bad evolution, it's just, it's, it's too close, I think. So we've gotten through the first starters and we've only, uh, yeah, it's only in like five minutes. Uh, Caterpie. Caterpie's a caterpillar, as the name implies. Got a weird little red wishbone thing on his head. Uh, Caterpie, I'm not a big fan of. I'm gonna go ahead and put Caterpie in, uh, in the D tier. There's a, there's a bit of charm to Caterpie just because it's a lot of people's first Pokemon they encounter in the wild. Well, actually, that's not true. It was probably like Pidgey or Rattata. We'll get to those chumps later. Um, just very unexciting. Do you ever get excited when you see a Caterpie in the wild? That's what I thought. Uh, Metapod. Uh, even, even less exciting than Caterpie. Um, in fact, okay, I have a funny story about Metapod. Uh, which way is it facing? I always thought it was facing the way of its uh, nose to the right. That's what I thought it was growing up before I saw the, uh, well, when I just saw the card, I guess, and, and in the game before I saw it in the TV show. Um, but uh, he's actually facing the other way. Very weird. I don't like it. Let's move on to Butterfree. Butterfree is uh, basically, it's a, it's a butterfly, but, um, you know, one thing I always thought was interesting like if you put if you put Venonat and Butterfree side by side, don't they look like Butterfree should evolve from Venonat? I'm sure somebody's noticed that before. I'm sure I'm not the first one. Uh, Butterfree, I'm gonna go ahead and put Butterfree in the B tier. Uh, it loses points just because it's basically a giant butterfly with with big red eyes, I guess, as a differentiator. But uh, classic Pokemon. Love learned Sleep Powder on it to help with the first gyms in Red and Blue. It's uh, it's a good one. Weedle. Uh, Weedle is the same as Caterpie, except it knows Poison Sting. <sniffs> Boring. Kakuna, same as Metapod, you go in the E tier. Uh, Beedrill. Beedrill is pretty cool. Not just a giant bee, also got big ol' whatever those are, spikes on his hands. <laughs> One thing that I think is kind of, uh, false advertising here is that both Butterfree and Beedrill only have four limbs, so they're not technically insects. We're gonna put Beedrill in the C tier, though. Pidgey. Pidgey is, is, is literally just a pigeon, uh, an angry pigeon. Always has that furrowed brow. Do you ever get excited when you see a Pidgey in the wild? No. In fact, uh, you might, you might, you might decide to quit playing the game. I'm gonna put, uh, Pidgey in D tier. Actually, no. Pidgey is C. I think Pidgey is like baseline Pokemon. It's like the minimum that we should expect from a Pokemon. Speaking of uh, saying the bar low, we got Pidgeotto here. It's Pidgey, but uh, it's going through an awkward teenage hairstyle phase. Uh, Pidgeotto, I think, kind of looks worse than Pidgey. So we're going to put him in the D tier here. And uh, Pidgeot. Pidgeot has cooler hair than Pidgeotto, which is to be expected. Um, but they're very, very similar. They're a little too similar for me to put them in different tiers here. Rattata. Uh, Rattata's a rat. <laughs> Purple rat. Uh, I haven't seen those in real life. I've seen brown pigeons, but not purple rats. Rattata, I think, has to go D tier. It's, uh... A little bit below the minimum that we should expect out of a Pokemon design. It's a rat, but it's purple, so now it's a Pokemon. I don't think so. You can't get away with that. Not on my watch. Okay, I seem to have found a problem with this tier list because it actually includes a Lolan Raticate, but not the original Raticate. So we're gonna treat this like it's the original Raticate. Because once again, I'm not doing regional variants. Uh, Raticate is, uh, well, you know, I always thought Raticate was a little cooler than Rattata. For one thing, it has normal coloring, it has, has this, like, golden brown sheen to it, and it looks, it looks more intimidating. R Raticate's very good, uh, early on in red and blue. An intimidating foe to come against. Yeah, let's go ahead and put him in C. I think he's improved over Rattata. 
if nothing else than for intimidation factor. Spiro. Now, Spiro, for some reason, has this weird lion's mane type of thing on his head. Can't really say that I have ever understood Spiro. We're gonna put Spiro in D tier. It's like a worse Pidgey. It's like they they thought, oh, we can't have just one boring bird Pokemon. We gotta have two. Next, we got Firo, which I guess is more of like a... He's like the scar to Pidgeot's Mufasa, if you will. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna put him in, in D tier, too. The only reason I would rank him any higher is because in episode one of Pokemon, uh, I thought that he was super rare, because Ash sees a ho -O in the sky in episode one of the animated series, and I always thought it was a Firo. So I, I, I never really understood, you know, when I was 12, why the Firo was so revered in that episode. So that gave him a little little spark for me early on. I would have put him, I would have put him up here. But uh, now I know better. Ekans. Ekans is snake backwards, so that's pretty cool. It's a snake, but it's purple. Ekans, I think, is a solid Pokemon. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the B tier. I'm pretty happy with Ekans overall. Very cool, especially for early on in the numbering systems, because uh, most of the good Pokemon in Gen 1 are later on in the numbering. But Ekans is solid, if for no other reason than it evolves into Arbok, who's an A tier Pokemon. It's a badass Cobra. It's too bad that Arbok isn't a better Pokemon in the games. But then again, I don't really pay attention to the competitive scene. Maybe Arbok is like S tier in competitive Pokemon. I have no idea. Pikachu. Okay, let's just, yeah, Pikachu's S tier. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Raichu. So, Raichu, I think, is a bit of a step down from Pikachu, even though I always evolve my Pikachu. I don't understand why Ash didn't do that in the TV show. Some stubborn refusal about like, Pikachu doesn't want to evolve. Raichu has better stats. Get him out there. Plus, Raichu looks like he's got little earrings on his ears. He's like, uh, like the cool version of Pikachu. Uh, Raichu, though, A tier. I mean, you can't you can't ride him off too hard, I think, because he is like a it's a cooler Pikachu. Pikachu's cute. Raichu's cool. That's the little dynamic they have going on. Next, we have Sandshrew. Sandshrew. The main thing that differentiates Sandshrew is that it has a brick-like formation on its skin. A uh, brick-like formation that I find very appealing. I would like to put Sandshrew, um, well, actually, it's, I don't find it that appealing. I'm gonna put him in C, because I think, once again, uh, kind of meeting like the baseline that we should expect from Pokemon, just the bare minimum with Sandshrew. Uh, Sand Slash, cool little twist on Sandshrew, he grew like these big old claws, all of a sudden can use like Slash. He looks like a porcupine, it's got these spikes in the back. Sand Slash is pretty cool, uh, not cool enough I would say to, to get him out of C tier, but I, you know, I appreciate it. Nidoran Female, and you know what, let's go ahead and put Nidoran Female and Nidoran Male together. Uh, well for one thing, I, I don't think that I can put them in separate tiers. <laughs> but, uh, because I mean, they're, they're basically, they're basically the same. In fact, I mean, like, Nidoran female's uh, head is raised here, and Nidoran male's head is down, and that's pretty much the defining difference between them, aside from their color. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these down in D tier. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, same with Nidorina and, and Nidorino. Just kinda, I don't know, they're, they're kinda just bigger versions of the same thing. Now, when we get to their evolutions, Nidoqueen and Nidoking. Nidoqueen, I wish I found Nidoqueen cooler than I did. Um, I think it's the, it's the weird breastplate that <laughs> makes me put Nidoqueen in C tier. Uh, I just, I'm uncomfortable with it. I'm not sure what it's all about. <laughs> I don't know why she has bikini armor on. Nidoking though, Kind of a cool Pokemon in my opinion. I think he goes in B tier. He's basically like purple Rhydon. Is kind of how I always thought of him. He's got this like I don't know raging energy to him. I guess this alpha male aura. I, I like Nido King a bit, not like too much, but uh, yeah, B tier for him. 
Clefairy. Clefairy is a mystery, right? Clefairy came from Mount Moon, and they think that it's an alien Pokemon or something. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't really interest me that much. Clefairy, C tier. Clefable, uh, E tier. It just, it got worse, didn't it? It just got worse. Vulpix. Uh, now, where where do you think? Like, where do you think Vulpix goes? Vulpix goes A tier. Come on, come on. It's a cool, cool little Ninetale fox. And speaking of Ninetales, Ninetales, S tier. Who doesn't think that Ninetales is S tier? Come out. I just want to talk. Ninetales, as the name implies, is a nine-tailed fox. Actually, I don't even know. No, no, no. Vulpix has six tails. My apologies for never sitting down to count out Vulpix's tails. Anyway, yeah, good, good little evolution line there. This is about when the Pokemon start getting a little cooler for me in, in this point in the numbering. Um, I take that back, actually. Jigglypuff. Uh, I think Jigglypuff is better than Clefairy, even though they look tremendously similar. They got the little curly Q in the in the center of their forehead. They got the pointy ears. I mean, they're both pink. Jigglypuff, though, I think it's the edge because it can it can put people to sleep, and uh, I like the bigger eyes. Just overall, Jigglypuff way cuter than Clefairy. Uh, now, with that said. Um, my girlfriend got into Pokemon pretty recently, and uh, when she found out that Jigglypuff evolved into Wigglytuff, uh, she kind of lost her mind a little bit. She thought it was so funny. So uh, yeah, Wigglytuff, nobody takes you seriously. Uh, you kind of lost all the cuteness factor that Jigglypuff had when you changed shape. So uh, I'm just going to put you down in E tier. Fairy and, and Jigglypuff, most of the time when Pokemon evolve, I approve of it, but not in this case. Uh, Zubat, F tier. Golbat! So Golbat is uh, a Zubat with a bigger mouth and eyes. And it's enough to dig it out of F tier and put it squarely in E tier. Which, if you think about it, in the grand scale, it could be worse. Oddish. Oddish is... Uh, well, it's like a blue little turnip thing. It's got like two eyes and a mouth. I don't know how it hears. I don't know how it smells. But, uh, it's a plant, so... Oddish, like, once again, I think it's kind of... It's kind of the baseline that we're working from. And, uh, unfortunately that baseline gets kind of ruined by gloom down here. Kind of just disgusto, drooling all over the place. The grass turns into a, a weird other plant on its head. It's like Oddish graduated high school, but didn't go out and get a job, and now it's gloom. Fortunately, though, at some point it makes something out of itself, and it turns into Vile Plume, which I think is a B-tier Pokemon here. Nothing too exciting. Uh, actually, hey, you know what? I think Vile Plume is kind of a C. I've always wanted to like Vile Plume more than I do, and I think maybe in Gen 1, Vile Plume is kind of cool. But today, hey, you're C tier, bud. You're Erica's ultimate Pokemon in the grass gym. But other than that, what do you have going for you? Huh? What do you have going on in your life? You picked yourself back up from gloom. <laughs> I guess that's good. Paris. Uh, Paris is, is uh, D tier. I get what they were going for with this, with the mushrooms and everything. Paris. Uh, parasite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Parasect, I think, I think, is another instance where it kind of just got worse. It took me forever to figure out that, that those white dots are its eyes, apparently. I always thought that they were teeth or something when I was a kid. Parasect just kind of, I mean, if you look, if you look at the claws, if you look at them side by side, the claws are in the exact same positions, in the exact same shape. I mean, it's just... We gotta have some standards here. Venonat. Venonat is actually the first Pokemon I ever saw. So I have a soft spot for that. Uh, I opened up a jungle booster pack on a whim because my friends were talking about Pokemon and how cool it was and I wanted to be cool too. So I bought one jungle booster pack at Target and Venonat was the first card that I saw. 
And I'll never forget it because it's like, when I saw him, you might think, Venonat, really? But when I saw it, I got it. I was like, I get this now. I'm in. And so, uh, he goes C tier for me. Venomoth is just kind of like, didn't we already see this with, uh, with, with Butterfree here? It's just, it's a moth instead of a butterfly. But for some reason, the moth didn't need to cocoon. And I don't know how it skipped that process. I don't know what sort of nepotism is happening there, but uh, yeah. He got out of there. <laughs> just got free without having to metamorphosize. Diglett! Diglett is, uh, unfortunately, a D tier Pokemon. Looks like someone painted their thumb with an eyes and a, a nose and just kind of stuck it up out of the ground. Uh, not not too cool. Doug Trio, kind of the same thing. There's just three thumbs sticking out of the ground. Uh, I want to be clear though. If I were ranking regional variants, uh, this this is what would be happening to a Lowland Diglett and a Lowland Doug Trio. Meowth. Meowth is uh, a tough one to assess because he can talk, at least in the cartoon. Can't in the games for whatever reason. Uh, it's a cat that likes money, has a coin on its head, C tier. However, however, Persian, cool cat Pokemon, goes in the B tier. There's not a whole lot of like, big cat Pokemon. And uh, Persian's one of very few. So I think it gets points just for that. Loses the coin, gains a red jewel instead. I'm pretty confident about putting Persian in B tier. I feel pretty good about that. Psyduck. Psyduck is a duck that gets confused, gets headaches. Psyduck. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and put Psyduck in B tier. I think Psyduck's kind of funny because of how doofy he is. He's just a little doof. I like his three hairs on his head. I like the blank stare. He's just kind of a walking disaster, isn't he? Now with that said, the evolution, Golduck, I think goes into A tier. I think it's cool. I like the evolutions where like you got some sort of useless looking Pokemon where you're like, how could anything positive come out of this? And then they evolve into something pretty badass. Golduck is pretty badass. It's got the, I think what really sells Golduck for me is he's got the red dot in his forehead that he can shoot psychic beams out of. He can do his little Psy beam. There was a Pokemon card where he's like, <laughs> This is gonna be a long video. And uh, there's like a psi beam coming out of his, out of his forehead. Mankey. Mankey is a boilerplate Pokemon. It's a angry monkey C tier. However, when he gains boxing gloves and becomes prime ape, I believe he moves to B tier. I do like me a prime ape. Prime ape is an angrier Mankey and I like the angry Pokemon as long as the anger is like part of their personality. Like Nidoking King looks mad, but he's not. He just looks like it. Prime Ape is angry at the world. He feels he's been treated unfairly his entire life. The world's been out to get him, and now he's out to get the world. And I appreciate that about him. I respect it. Growlithe. Uh, Growlithe, I'm just gonna go ahead and put Growlithe and Arcanine in S tier. I love, Arcanine is my favorite Pokemon. It, I love I love dog. I, li I like fire Pokemon, and I also like tigers. And it's it's it, they're basically dogs with tiger stripes that are fire type. So it's just speaking my language. Sometimes I think to myself, why haven't they given our canine a third evolution yet? Or sorry, second evolution or a Mega, or a G-Max, or something, and then I think to myself, you don't want that, John. You don't want to see that. Arcanine, by the way, uh, uh, one of the most powerful Pokemon, always has a huge pool of HP, good moves, like good attack. I, I always have him in my uh, in my party when I'm playing through a Pokemon game, even, even Sword and Shield. I had an Arcanine till the very end. Uh, I think he's, I think he's like level 80 or something by now. Let's move on to, uh, from my high praise of the Growlithe. Is it Growlithe or Growlithe? Who cares? Poliwag is 
a tadpole, but it has feet, so not a tadpole, actually further evolved than a tadpole. Poliwag is, uh, you know, once again, I think it's like the bare minimum we can expect uh, from a Pokemon. Poliwhirl, I mean, the the squiggly like goes the other way on the belly and uh, he's got boxing gloves now, just like Primate, but unlike Primate, he doesn't have like a angry personality to go with it, so not as cool. Just kind of got a blank stare. Where does mouth go anyway? And again, speaking of where the mouth go, Poliwrath is, is like a bigger, angrier Poliwhirl. I just feel like this entire evolution chain, like it's not bad, but I'm never, I'm never excited to evolve a Poliwag in the games. It's always for Pokedex completion. Like when I evolve uh, Machop, into Machamp. Well, for one thing, it takes a trade, but that's an exciting evolution chain, in my opinion. I don't feel anything when I get a Poliwrath. Abra. All right. Dating back to red and blue. Who remembers seeing Abra teleport right away as soon as you encountered it? And you try in vain to get Pikachu to Thunder Wave it so it doesn't teleport right away, and you have a chance to throw a ball at it, maybe get a Paralysis Stunlock. Abra. Yeah, you, you go and beat here. You go and beat here and you stay there, Abra. Kadabra, I think uh, a solid evolution of Abra. Got the spoons, got the mustache. Kind of a logical evolution there without being the same thing. Uh, Alakazam. I mean, uh, this is an entire evolution line. I'm just going to put B tier. For one thing, these Pokemon were broken in the Gen 1 games in red and blue. Man, you go into Pokemon Stadium with a set of six, first one out there is uh, Kadabra or Alakazam. And they're using Psychic, and they're trying to get a knockout first turn because they're so fast and their special attack is so high. Legendary. Well, not that legendary. Good. They're good. Good, not great. B tier. Uh, Machop. Machop is buff little dude, bodybuilder dinosaur, bipedal bodybuilder dinosaur thing with a weird haircut. Uh, Machop, I think, uh, goes in C tier for me. Kind of more of a anthropomorphic Pokemon where it's like, you kind of look like a person a little bit. And it makes things kind of weird, especially with like Machoke, which, which by the way, Machoke, I think B, B tier, because Machoke has the championship belt, so you know that it's competed, and that it's taken seriously at its, uh, at its sport. I like the stripes on the, on the sign. What, what I think is weird about some of these Pokemon that look, like, kind of like humans, like they got, they're, they're bipedal, they got muscles, as it's like, are you, are you telling me there's not, like, a lonely house, housewife out there that looked over at their Machoke and was like, maybe. Uh, Machamp though, A tier. I'm not, I'm not quite ready to put Machamp into S tier, but Machamp with the four arms, I mean, what says strength like Machamp in Pokemon, you know? When you think of a fighting type, when you think of a good fighting type, you think Machamp. Or at least you should. Bellsprout, okay. Bellsprout, uh, I'm trying to collect my thoughts. Bellsprout is an affront to the senses. It is an evolutionary mistake. It is it is God's mistake. Bellsprout, I think, belongs firmly in, in, in E tier. It, it, not quite Zubat levels of abomination. You know, never should have been allowed to walk the earth. Uh, but it, it's down there. It's it's definitely down there, and 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 while we're at it, what the hell is this? Weeping Bell? Well, the, this one's not even drooling. I don't know what the I don't know what was the deal with Gen One Grass Pokemon's mid evolutions and drooling, but they like to have Weeping Bell drool a lot. I mean, just look at this. Like, how dare you? You tried to sell this to me as part of a package. You just thought you'd slip it in there, and I wouldn't notice. What are you trying to get away with? Victory Bell, however. I mean, it's like a Venus flytrap. 
You know, it's like a it's like a man-eating plant and pissed off probably because it looks so ugly for most of their life. Uh, Victory Bell D tier. You know, you've redeemed yourself a little bit, but uh you know, once again, just kind of the whole thing is flawed, you know. Uh Tentacool. Okay. Tentacool not really that cool, <laughs> if I'm honest. Just kind of a it's a blue jellyfish. That kind of looks like it's been watching too many Saturday cartoons. Kind of got that zoned out look. Like not nothing's really going on out there in the ocean. Um, yeah, C tier for me. And then you got you got Tentacool and then Tentacruel, which is jellyfish, but it's it's got a, it's got a beak, big beak and. Now Tentacruel uh, resents the fact that they have gone nowhere in life and they want to take it out on others. Which, you know, I kind of get that. That's something I would normally give a B tier for as far as Pokemon personality. But the top looks the same. It's just kind of, I don't know. I'm not really into jellyfish Pokemon, I guess. They just don't really do anything for me. All right. Now, here's a controversial opinion. I think Geodude is pretty cool. Uh, first of all, I like the name Geodude. It's kind of like, sup, brah. Plus, it's a rock with arms. And he's an angry rock with arms. I'm gonna put Geodude in the B tier. I think it's kind of cool how he floats. I don't know how he does it. Doesn't have any legs. Magic. Levitation. Graveler. I think you take a bit of a step down with Graveler. To be honest, big rock Pokemon, but now the Mystique is gone. Now he's got legs. You don't have to wonder how he, how he's floating around. Also, he's got four arms. You may not be able to see there because uh, it's so small on the screen. But um, he's got four arms, and it's like I already saw this somewhere. Uh, hello, you did it better here. You did it better with Machamp. And then we got Gollum. Gollum is... Gollum is pretty cool. I mean, it's, he's like a dinosaur, right? But he's like trapped inside a boulder, but the boulder is used as like armor for protection. But also, hard for the dinosaur to really get around. It's weird how Geodude is like clearly <laughs> and like an animated rock, right? Come to life. Graveler, rock come to life. Gollum, dinosaur and rock! I'm not sure I understand uh, when the rock turned into a dinosaur, but yeah, Gollum, I think it'd be tier. Solid Pokemon. I feel like if you just knocked him over, <laughs> you would you would have defeated him though. Ponyta, uh, Ponyta or Ponyta, as some people say, Ponyta. Ponyta is a horse whose mane and tail is on fire. So it's a fire Pokemon. Point on Rapidash. Uh, Rapidash is the same thing. It's just, uh, it's like older horse, but with horn. So unicorn. It's uh, a lot of people don't, I think a lot of people don't categorize Rapidash as a unicorn, but it's got a horn there. Makes sense to me. Um, I'm I'm not, not big on these. I think there's better horse Pokemon in the, in the series, if I'm honest. I'm just not, not too high on Ponyta. Ponyta, as some people say, and Rapid Ash. Slowpoke. Slowpoke's really dopey, but unlike Psyduck, there's really no redeeming qualities here. He's not that cute. Slowpoke's just kind of like a weird little pink thing. Like Psyduck, you look at and you're like, ah, he has a bill. It's like a duck. Slowpoke you look at and you're like, what the hell is this thing? What kind of a weird experimentation facility did you escape from? And then you got, you got Slow Bro, which, a little, a little trivia for you that all Pokemon nerds already know. The little shell on his tail is a shelter. So really, Slow Bro is two Pokemon. <laughs> Again, I've just never really been that impressed by it. C tier for you guys. Magnemite is, uh... It's an eyeball. 
on a steel circle with some magnets. Bravo, it's uh it's real inspired. And then and then you got an even more inspired evolution here. Magneton, which is literally three magnemites. However, I, I do think this gets points over Doug Trio because it's not just three magnemites. The 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 magnets are repelling each other, which gives it its shape. And I think that's kind of creative, but not enough to like give it more than C tier. So that's where it stays. Farfetched, uh, I, I've never really understood the point of this Pokemon, but I, I'll put it in D tier. I kind of like how bizarre it is. Duck with the leak stick, hits people with it, turns into Surfetched later, which is hilarious. Uh, Doduo, do, do not make a Pokemon like this again, please. Doduo is it's a bird, it's ostrich with two heads. And then it evolves into an angrier ostrich with three heads, Dodrio. Dodrio is cooler than Doduo, though. I, I have to put Dodrio a tier higher just out of principle, in that it's not one of the worst Pokemon I've ever seen. Here we got Seal, uh, and Seal is literally a seal. <laughs> But see, they changed it from S-E-A-L to S-E-E-L, so it's different. I really want to know who named Seal, and just how stupid they thought we all were. Seal, I think, goes D tier for me. Dugong is pretty much the same thing as Seal, except it, said, it, it lost paws and gained flippers. I've always had a soft spot for Dugong though, so I'll put Dugong in C tier. I think he, I think he's cooler than Seal at least. At least he's not named the animal that he is, but with one letter changed, you know? They're not trying to pull one over on us there. Grimer is literally a pile of sludge, but he's happy to see you after your long day at work because he was home alone and you left him in the kennel. I can't believe you did that. Grimer is... It's like toxic sludge come to life, you know? So, kind of the embodiment of Twitter. is purple because it's poison type and the Pokemon designers were like, all poison types are purple, which I think is an interesting design choice. Uh, Muck is like a smushed down Grimer. He's lost all his enthusiasm and actually you coming home from work ain't that cool. Also, he can't really see anymore because the the sludge is covering his eyes and his mouth is bigger now. Is really all that muck is. But still, I can't bring myself to bring muck down a tier. It's just kind of a baseline Pokemon there. Shelter is uh well, it it exists. <laughs> it it's it's a, a shellfish Pokemon sticking its tongue out, blowing a raspberry to the world, I guess. And then it evolves into a uh, Cloyster, who, who's slightly cooler than Shelter, uh, but looks a lot like a female body part to me, and I can't unsee that every time I see it. I just feel like, and in, in, in there's something about the name Cloyster that just seems a little bit like an innuendo. I don't know what it is, but I can't I can't do anything with this this Pokemon. I can't. Ghastly, let's, uh, here we go, back on track. Ghastly is a, a ghost Pokemon. He's uh, evil, he's cackling, he's cocky, he knows he's cool, and he goes in B tier. One of the first ghost Pokemon, actually the first ghost Pokemon. Ghastly right there is B tier. When you first show up in Lavender Town, there's a whole like storyline based around you not being able to see Ghastly because it's a ghost. Whole thing is cool. Ghastlies are sweet. If you don't like Ghastly, I don't like you. Haunter is also a B tier Pokemon. Very cool. I like Haunter because it's like a ghost that's starting to take shape, right? And I think the Ghastly evolutionary line does a great job of showing you how Pokemon are supposed to look when they evolve, right? Ghastly, formless but you can see in the eyes, there's something there. Haunter, 
he begins to take shape. Haunter is really like a half Gengar, word to think about, and then Gengar. This is what you saw all along when you saw Ghastly. You just weren't able to actually see him yet. By the way, Gengar A tier, don't worry, I'm moving him up. I'm moving him up. I'm not as high on Gengar as a lot of other people. I know a lot of people that are like, Gengar is my favorite Pokemon of all time. Uh, so yeah, he can be on S tier on your list, but on mine, A tier. I'm still giving him respect. I'm still giving Gengar respect, but uh, yeah, A tier, you know, huge compliment but I can't quite put him there with my favorites. I just realized that I have five fire types in my S tier, but I guess uh, I guess I'm just that type of person then. Onyx. I like Onyx, big rock snake. There's, there's, there's few moments in the cartoon more awe-inspiring than seeing Brock's Onyx for the first time and just seeing how huge it is this this kind of got a weird vibe pretty fast but you know what i'm saying it's a big old rock snake look at him and i can't believe he doesn't evolve back then but the evolution is super cool one of the cool rock types i've said cool like eight times we're gonna move on now drowsy uh i'll be honest i'm not sure why drowsy exists we're gonna put drowsy in d tier it is it an elephant is it a is it a tapir? Is it? I've never actually thought about this before. I guess it's a tapir, but it can stand on two legs. It's got like a Charlie Brown color scheme, and it's psychic. I don't know. Hypno, uh, kind of just the same thing. Well, not really the same thing. Actually, totally different. Now has like a pendulum and this annoying frilly collar. I just, I don't know, Hypno was really scary in the cartoon. There was like the moment where, I think it was Sabrina's Hypno. <laughs> like, that, that episode seemed like it went on for forever. With the Hypno being like, Hypno, Hypno, Hypno. When he was hypnotizing Ash's team and they wouldn't do anything. That was like the only cool thing Hypno's ever done. Uh, Krabby is literally just a crab. Uh, Kingler, slightly cooler crab, with bigger pincher, and and uh, but need but needs some dental work done. <laughs> Got a kind of a crooked smile now. Uh, kind of went a little crazy, drunk with power. Voltorb, you know, one cool thing I think about Voltorb is that. It looks like a Pokeball. And at first I thought, how lazy, it looks like a Pokeball, but they put eyes on it. But the Pokedex entry, I believe, said something about like, Voltorb can disguise itself as a Pokeball in the wild. Right? But then wouldn't you just pick it up? <laughs> Who wouldn't want a free Pokeball? Now with Electrode, they got lazy and they were like, what if we reversed the colors? And I'm sorry, and we took away the eyes. I'm not buying it, and I don't think you should either. And also, what if we made him smug with a grin? You know what, Electrode? Also, every time I see an Electrode in the games, it like explodes, knocks out my Pokemon, knocks itself out, can't catch it. Who pissed in your Cheerios, Electrode? Execute. Speaking of, speaking of pissing in Cheerios. I don't know how, I don't know what was in the water that made them decide that uh, like, six angry eggs, one of which was already dead, but was somehow in the group. <laughs> How are they attached to each other? Eggs are cute. I mean, it's, it's eggs. It's, it looks like a Goosebumps monster. Like, it looks like a cover of a Goosebumps book. Well, what would the book be called? Eggs over easy. Goosebumps number 63. How exciting. Or something like that. It would be it would be some dumb pun like that. Executor, on the other hand, like a little bit disturbing, but I get what they were going for. It, it turns from eggs into like a coconut tree as the concept, which those are two completely different things. I get that they were going for like they were eggs and now they're coconuts, both round objects, but that's all they have in common with each other. Eggs into tree. Yeah, okay. That evolution 
doesn't make any sense. Cubone. I mean, again, this is like baseline Pokemon. It's just... It's not really anything too exciting. The same goes for Marowak. There's that whole storyline of like, oh, the Marowak lost her Cubone in the Lavender Town Ghost Tower. One thing I always wondered, like, is the bone part of the Pokemon? Are there Cubones or Marowaks that don't have bones? Like, what happens to them if they don't have one? Hitmonlee and uh, Hitmonchan. We'll just do these at the same time. Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee. Obviously, they're named after Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, which I felt very clever for figuring out when I was a kid. Uh, I'll be honest. I think these guys are kind of, they're kind of D tier. They don't evolve, really. They don't evolve in like a meaningful way. And uh, I'm not really sure what Hitmonlee is supposed to be. And Hitmonchan again has that weird like humanoid aspect to it. It's got like, it has like actual boxing gloves too. Like Primeape at least has like flesh colored boxing gloves, but Hitmonchan like literally has boxing gloves. Again, does it come like that? Are those its hands? And then it's got clothes? Okay, now we're gonna start getting into the weird ones that don't evolve. Um, Lickitung. What is there to say about Lickitung? Uh, it's distinctively hideous. It's confoundingly bizarre. And it's definitely like one of the last ones that they made when they were trying to fill up the Pokedex so that it would hit 150 instead of 143 or something like that. Get why it's called Lick a Tongue? Because it's got a big old tongue and it'll lick you with it. Lick a Tongue. Lick a Tongue. It kind of gets points for being bizarre for the sake of being bizarre. Like, I don't understand what those yellow markings are on it. But, uh, yeah, uh, D tier right there. Coughing and wheezing. Yeah, James really got the short end of the stick with the Team Rocket Pokemon, because Jesse got Ekans and Arbok, but James got these two fuckos. Coughing, I don't, it's like, it's like a planet with a bunch of craters on it but then smoke comes out, and it's poisonous smoke. So he's purple. <laughs> Wheezing is two coughings, but they're sad now, and, and one's like a conjoined twin. And then there's also this like third thing off to the side, which no one ever explains that they're connected to. I don't know, I'm just not really that big of a fan. Rhyhorn. You get it, he's a little, he's like a Bulbasaur, but with rocks. Rock dinosaur. Rhydon is uh, a B tier, I think. I think it's a solid evolution, Rhyhorn to Rhydon. Not very creative in the naming, but Rhydon, he's a yeah, Rhydon. Uh, I wonder, if, did they mean for it to be like that? Like, Rhydon, nobody says that. Nobody said that for like 40 years. Nobody has ever said that in like 40 years. I'm the first one. So I don't think it was on purpose. Ride on though. You know, he's a he's like I'm trying to avoid saying the word cool, but he's cool. He's got a drill horn. Look at him. Look at his stance. He's all he was ready to take on the world. He's like, come at me. Come at me, bro. I'm not gonna let you ruin my day. I know Earthquake. That's what Rhydon's saying. Chansey, uh, I try to move them to C tier, so maybe it'll fool you guys where they're going, but uh, Chansey. I, it's got a kangaroo pouch with an egg, and it's got this weird flippy bob haircut, but then what is it? It's just some pink thing. Tangela. Tangela is a spaghetti, blue spaghetti Pokemon, and there's something inside, but we don't know what it looks like. Tangela, D tier. It's got feet, red feet. Kangaskhan, you know, it's again, 
here's the thing. Look, look at look at Kangaskhan and Chansey next to each other, okay? Kangaskhan and Chansey both got the pouch going on, but it's like one of them does it right. One, one of these, one of these I buy. Kangaskhan's one of the few Pokemon that doesn't evolve in Gen 1 that I genuinely like. Uh, the other one I think is obvious. Horsey. Now, Horsey is a seahorse, but they took C and they put it behind the whore to make the name Horsey. Again, kind of a baseline Pokemon. Seedra, however, is pretty cool. Seedra, of course, short for Sea Dragon. And Seedra is solidly in B tier. It's, it's an angrier horsey. One thing they did a lot with Gen 1, and this might be something that we see with all the remaining gens as well, is they like to make Pokemon evolve into like the same thing, but angry. And Seedra is kind of a continuation of that. It's got more angles though. It's got scales. Horsey doesn't have scales. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't need to defend Seedra being in B tier. I think it's not that uh, crazy. Goldine and Sea King, which honestly they look like male and female versions of like the same fish. You know how like there's the red cardinal and then the brown cardinal, and it's just the male and female cardinal. That's what Sea King and Goldine look like. I'm gonna put. Goldine in D tier, it's literally just a goldfish and, and Sea King, you're you're down there with them, okay? And the same thing, you know what? Star you, first of all, star you and star me, fuck off. Star you and star me. Star you, they're the same, it's the same thing, except star me is like, he's got a star you upside down on his back. And together, they make a new shape. But you're not fooling anyone. Oh yeah, and then the jewel and on the front turns into a bigger jewel. And then it's purple again for some reason, but not poison type this time. <laughs> Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is insulting, to be honest. To the fact that Mr. Mime has a title I think is the most disturbing thing of all. Beyond the fact that who who thought that we wanted to see like a mime Pokemon? Look at how smug he looks while doing it. That's ridiculous. There aren't there aren't there female Mr. Mimes in Pokemon? What does the title even mean? Mr. Mime just unforgivable. But but not quite as bad as Zubat. No 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 no. Mr. Mime is F tier. F, F tier is reserved for like Mr. Mime level offenses within the Pokemon design at large. Now, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that we don't have to put up with this for much longer because Scyther right here, our old pal Scyther, it, it rests firmly in A tier where, where, where they belong. Scyther is... Actually, you know, earlier I, I counted Scyther among like the only Pokemon I like in Gen 1 that didn't evolve. And it's true because Scyther does not evolve in Gen 1. But it does evolve later. I, I, I still, Scyther, A tier. Come on, who doesn't like Scyther? Let's just go ahead. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna move a lot of these guys up because they're all, they're all, they're all very similar Pokemon that don't evolve. So we got Jinx, and uh, I think Jinx is like Mr. Mime level bad. So we're gonna put Jinx down in F tier. Again, the, the humanoid Pokemon really freaked me out, and especially, it's got a wig. And it's got the wig, and it's got like a blow up doll expression on its face, and, and a, a strange breastplate. And just, it's F tier. What more needs to be said about Jinx? Electabuzz, which when I was a kid, I called it uh, Electrobuzz because I thought that was cooler. And then when I found out it was Electabuzz, 
I, I somehow thought it was less interesting. Electabuzz, I think, belongs in C tier. As does Magmar, the fire duck. It looks a lot like, again, with the fire on the tail, it's like, yeah, we've seen this before. Electabuzz also steals some design from Pikachu, but it's like Magmar and Electabuzz are like serious versions of Charmander and Pikachu, if you will. Well, Magmar's got like the duck bill. Magmar for me, is uh, bumped up a bit by the cartoon episode, Blaine versus Ash, Magmar versus Charizard. It was something that uh, stilled me to my very soul watching it, especially with the cliffhanger, part one and part two, oof, battle for the ages. And what's ridiculous is that it shouldn't have been. Charizard should have wiped the floor with Magmar. But then again, the cartoon does have a lot of battles like that that don't make any sense, like, what was it, Kingler beating Bellsprout or something like that? Or like the Bellsprout kicks everyone's ass in the Pokemon League? Whatever, I'm getting off topic. Pinsir, Pinsir is, is like kind of terrifying, but I don't know, it's like we already had Scyther, and, and for, for some reason Scyther and Pinsir are version exclusive, aren't they, in the early games? Kind of sucks. Taurus is, is, is literally a bull. It's just got like more tails. It's it's literally, you, you can walk outside and see a Tauros today. So I'm gonna put Tauros down in, in D tier because I think we should expect a little bit more. Oh wow, we're getting to the point where I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm putting it below screen. Magikarp. Magikarp is C tier. It's a fish, and I know I'm putting the fish above the other fish, Goldeen. We're putting them in separate tiers, but Magikarp gets points because it turns into Gyarados. Gyarados, by the way, S-tier Pokemon. I really like the, the story of Magikarp's evolution into Gyarados. You got this horrible little fish this just useless, terrible little nothing. A little speck of dust. Should have been ground into the dirt underneath someone's boot when it was barely breathing. <laughs> but instead, it was given a chance and it blossomed into a cool ass water dragon. Like Chinese, Chinese water dragon thing, I guess. I don't know. It's awesome though. Love Gyarados. And also Gyarados is, is, it's a good name. It's not like some of these other ones where it's like, well, it's called Doduo because there's two of them. They didn't get cute with Gyarados. They just gave it a cool name. Uh, they didn't try to cheapen it and yuck it up with some English pun or anything. Gyarados, S tier, love it. Lapras, well you can ride on it, and it's like, it's basically a plesiosaur, right? Not a dinosaur, by the way, but a plesiosaur. Sort of like, um, the Loch Ness Monster. Lapras for me is C tier, and you can ride around on it, and that's pretty much it. It's, it always looks smug, which docks points for me, because I don't think Pokemon have anything they should be smug about personally. Ditto. I think Ditto has to be C tier because it can be any Pokemon, which means it can be any S tier Pokemon, but it can also be any F tier Pokemon as well. So it evens out to a C. I feel like that's the only accurate and fair way to assess Ditto. It can be any Pokemon, so it's just middle of the road in the end. All right, now we got Eevee and its three evolutions, Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon. Eevee, I think, belongs squarely in B tier. It's not that special on its own. It's not that cute on its own, in my opinion, but the unique way that it evolves puts it in B tier by itself. Going through the list, I mean, you have Pokemon that evolve by leveling up, ones that evolve by trading, ones that evolve when you put a stone on it. 
But they all evolve one way, right? Eevee can evolve three different ways. One with a Water Stone, Vaporeon. One with a Thunderstone, Jolteon. And one with a Fire Stone, Flareon. Now Vaporeon, I think, is the coolest out of all of these. Jolteon, not the coolest, in my opinion. It can learn Pin Missile, a bug move, which is pretty ballsy. I like that. Uh, but I think Vaporeon and, uh, and Flareon, like Vaporeon is in high B tier for me, and Flareon is in low B tier, if that makes sense. But, uh, they're both there in B tier, and I'm gonna keep them there. Next we have Porygon. I'll be honest, I don't really understand what this thing is, and I don't think the people that made it do either. So I'm gonna leave it here, in D tier. It's, uh, well, it's a 3D Pokemon. It's basically data, right? I don't know. Just, whatever. Almanite has a shell, but it's not enough to save it. D tier. Amistar, you're literally the same thing. You got spikes on your shell. And once again, they try to do this thing like they did with Tentacruel. We're like, oh, it's got a beak now. Watch out. Yeah, not doing anything for me. Sorry. I did actually meet... There was one, there was this one guy I met in college, and as an icebreaker one time, I asked him what his favorite Pokemon was, and he said, Amistar. And I like, couldn't believe it. Is that a real story? Did that happen to me? Or did I heard, wait, did I hear someone else tell that story? Is that not my story? I'm getting kind of freaked out right now. <laughs> I think that happened to me. Oh no, okay. Moving on, uh, uh Kabuto is a, uh, it's an actual fossil. I'm trying to remember what the fossil is called. I think it's called a trilobite, is what it's called. If you Google image search trilobite, you'll see something that looks a lot like Kabuto, except without the cartoonish, you know, I don't know what's underneath the shell. <laughs> like, is that literally its skin? The, the blackness? The murky blackness there? Kabutops, though, let's not fool ourselves. Let's not fool ourselves with this. Kabutops, B tier. Not quite as cool as Scyther, but cool enough to get kind of close, all right? Scyther's the superior design, but you know what? I like me some Kabutops. Aerodactyl, I, I mean, whatever. Is <laughs> it? Okay, cool, you're a flying rock dragon thing. Yeah, tell it someone who cares. We're not impressed. Snorlax is... Well, I think out of pure charm, we have to put Snorlax in B tier, right alongside Kabutops. Just, I mean, we've all felt like Snorlax, right? <laughs> Some days you just don't wanna get up, and neither does Snorlax. That's why you gotta have a Poke Flute. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Articuno is the coolest one, of the three, and it belongs solidly in A tier. Zapdos is the second coolest of the three, squarely in B tier, and Moltres, you know what? I think you're kind of fine in C tier. Some might think that that's heresy. Moltres is not the coolest of, of the three, and that's not a pun. Or I remember when I was a kid, I thought it was so clever when I found out that, uh, or when I figured out, rather, because I figured it out. I didn't find it out. That Arctic Uno, Zap Dos, Mol Tres, Uno Dos Tres, One Two Three, in Espanol. I thought that was super cool. And I made all these fake legendary birds that were like, you know, Psy Quatro, the psychic legendary bird, and uh, Ground Cinco. <laughs> The ground flying type legendary bird. Uh, there were things like that. I have a bunch of fake Pokemon cards. All right, I went through the hassle of dragging Dratini, Dragonair, Dragonite, Mewtwo, and Mew up here into C tier. That's not where they'll stay. Don't worry. Dratini though, that's where that's where Dratini will stay. I think. No, actually, Dratini. I'm gonna put Dratini in B tier because Dratini is very exciting to encounter in the wild, and even though he's just kind of a serpent Pokemon, 
you know what's going to happen. We all know what's going to happen. And you know what Dratini means. He means that you're going to get an awesome, true dragon type at the end of it all. Dragonair, you know, adolescent uh, Dratini, we get it. You're, you're kind of the same. Dragonite, I think, is an A tier Pokemon. Not quite S tier. It's a bit too happy of a dragon. I prefer the ones like Tyranitar that have this like, don't fuck with me look on their face. Dragonite looks a little bit too much like he just wants to play board games with you or something. And uh, while I respect that, um, I don't find it intimidating. I don't fear it. And, you know, I, I like Gyarados. I fear Gyarados. I believe him. Uh, Dragonite, don't get the same intimidation factor from. What I do get intimidation factor from is, and we're just gonna go ahead and move Mewtwo and Mew up to B tier, because we know they're gonna at least be up there. Mewtwo, S tier. Is there any argument? Is there any argument? Mewtwo, one of the coolest Pokemon. I know that he's kind of humanoid a little bit, but there's just enough mystique and animalistic tendencies there with his behavior uh, to put him in S tier. Unfortunately, in, in the cartoon and or the movie, I guess, multiple movies, they made him talk. He's one of the only Pokemon that can talk, along with Team Rocket's Meowth. I don't know, I liked it better when he was just this mysterious thing he found in a cave in the games, but either way, Mewtwo, S tier, and, and that brings me to Mew, which Here's the deal, if we were just talking Gen 1, I might be like, yeah, Mew is S tier as well. But, you know, some generations have passed by now, and, and Mew, while you were very special to us back in Gen 1, I kind of look back and I'm like, what was so special about Mew? And you know what drove me nuts? Everyone thought he was underneath that pickup truck. He never was, and I'm just kind of still resentful about it. Also, Mew doesn't really learn that many good moves. I also had to use a Game Shark to even get a copy of Mew on my Game Boy so I can get all 151 back on my original blue save. So, you know what, Mew? You're just B tier. I can't put you C tier because you're not average in any sense of the word, but I just can't put you any higher, buddy. I know you want to be. I know that's what you want, but you're not going to get it. All right, so in review, this is what we have for Gen 1 so far. S tier, pretty clear cut. We got a nice even row there. A tier, slightly more than a row. Slightly more generous with A tier than S tier, but still pretty exclusive. B tier even, you know, there's not that many up there. It's kind of the ones that stood out from the crowd. C tier is the crowd. D tier is like, I mean, these are no good. E is, these are abominations. And F is, I, I wish not only that they were never born, but that I also was never born for having seen them. 